Hello, I'm David Lammy, the Minister for Skills, and it's a pleasure to send you this short message. Earlier this year, I attended a No Skills, No Fashion event organised by Skillfast. It was a glitzy occasion, but it had a deeper purpose. It was to launch a campaign to improve technical skills in the fashion and textile industry. People all over the world talk about London, Paris, Milan and New York in the same breath. Our fashion colleges are world famous. Yet that hard-earned kudos hides emerging skills shortages. For instance, some employers complain that homegrown graduates sometimes lack technical, commercial and production skills to turn their visions into reality. The government and Skillfast are working hard to ensure that people in the fashion and textile industry have the skills they need to succeed. It's only through doing this that we can prevent fashion commerce from being unnecessarily offshored. Skillsfast is in the process of reporting to the government on the possibility of creating a Couture Academy that might be founded by Jasper Conran. In addition, I believe we must do more to increase the numbers of fashion apprenticeships, especially those of the in-house variety. I know that Skillfast research shows that there were just 56 apprenticeships registered between September 2006 and February 2008. This is a poor show because as a diverse industry that requires some very specific knowledge and skills, fashion is ideally suited to the apprenticeship pathway. And I'd like to see smaller fashion and textile companies clustering together with a training provider to create an apprenticeship scheme or to make greater use of the hub and spoke model in which there is someone to deal with the training and necessary bureaucracy and the company can have the apprenticeship that it needs. Sector Skills Council, such as Skillfast, have a really important role as the representative of their employment services. And we are currently piloting an approach whereby Skillfast and other Sector Skills Councils approve vocational qualifications within their sector before accreditation. Providers, employers and awarding bodies can work together to ensure that all accredited qualifications really do meet employers' and learners' needs. And this approach also ensures that there's consistency across the sector and that duplication is avoided. Working more closely with employers will help to create a system where qualifications have more value to the industry. And this in turn will make it easier for students to progress and will make the industry as a whole much more productive. The Qualifications and Curriculum Authority is also piloting ways in which employers can participate more directly in the national qualification system. Firstly, QCA is accrediting some employers to award their own qualifications. Employers that have become accredited so far include big companies like Network Rail, Flybe and McDonald's. And around 30 other employers are already working in partnership with awarding bodies to have bespoke training nationally accredited. Secondly, we know that employers and staff often prefer qualifications that can be taken in bite-sized pieces, giving them greater flexibility to fit their learning around the needs of their work and obviously personal lives. And to give this greater flexibility, we're reforming the qualification system to enable all qualifications to be made up of units. And students are awarded credit when they complete each unit of learning, enabling recognition of achievements while qualifications are being completed. The credit which learners achieve can also be transferred if they wish to move from provider or employer. We've been testing the reform qualifications over the last two years and expect to start rolling out the reforms from this autumn. Of course, you don't have to be Jean-Paul Gaultier or Vivian Westwood to work in the fashion and textile industry. The fashion and fabrics workforce cuts across a remarkably wide skill set. The industry is rich and varied and the changes in the skills profile of the workforce tells a story about the way the UK industry is evolving. 
In March, we published our white paper, Innovation Nation, and this sets out how we're going to promote innovation in all sectors and across all sections of society. Exploiting new ideas and technology will be crucial to creating wealth in this industry, and learning providers need to respond to employers' needs to help shape a system where skilled workers are able to harness their creativity and come up with new items or products that find their way from the mind to the market more quickly. Because we know that to make our fashion and retail industry great, we need some pretty high level niche skills. And my department, Skillfast, and the funding bodies like the Higher Education Funding Council for England are working to forge closer links between universities and businesses. In government, we talk about the value of companies, ideas and research that spin out of universities. Nowhere is this truer than in the fashion industry, where students' end-of-year catwalk shows set global trends. For that reason, we need providers' support in seeking to help develop and deliver high-quality qualifications to a high standard. Education and learning providers can work together with Skillfast to continue to articulate the needs of the fashion and retail sector. And you can support ways for employers to engage most effectively with further and higher education. And in doing so, you will help to ensure that the fashion and clothing industry builds on success, remaining the hotbed of creativity, design and production that it's been for centuries. And I hope that you have an enjoyable and productive day. Thank you very much.